The Gospel reading today, our Lord tells us that no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And so what you have to begin with is the realization of the great and profound grace that God has given to you to be able to know Jesus Christ. No one can know him except the Father. And you do. The fact that God has chosen to reveal his son to you, to give you the grace. I mean, on one hand, yes, God's revealed his son to the entire world. But we know that most of the world doesn't believe. And tragically, even at this point, the majority of people who are baptized into Jesus Christ don't even believe in him. And so the real question you have to ask is, why me? Well, you might not really want to know the answer to those things because St. Paul kind of laid that out for us in the first reading. God doesn't choose the ones that the world would expect. He chooses the ones who are nothing. He chooses, yeah, how did he put it here? It, um, yeah, God chooses the, the weak to shame the strong and the base things of the world to shame the despi- and, the, and the despised, to shame the things that are that are and bring those that are not to bring to not those that are. So isn't that a wonderful thing to know that that's us? Yes, it is. Why? Because as St. Paul said, so that no one could pride himself before the Lord. None of us can say, I did this. I have faith in Jesus by my own doing. It's just so logical and so obvious, which in fact it is, but nonetheless, it's so logical and obvious that I came to this realization all by myself. No, we didn't. Just as our Lord said to St. Peter, when he was able to say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, mere flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. Now you can say, well, today we have the catechism and St. Peter didn't have that. Yes, you've been taught the catechism. Yes, you know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. There's a huge difference between knowing that and believing that. There is a rather famous Jewish professor who taught a class on Catholicism in his college and he, was, he taught it so beautifully that it, he was responsible for hundreds and hundreds of students converting to the Catholic faith. And one day someone said to him, you know, you've been teaching this class for how long and all these students have converted to the faith, but you haven't, why not? He said, because I don't believe it. He knew what the church taught, He was able to present it, and he was able to present it in such a a manner that kids who didn't know the right from the left were able to believe in the Lord. But this man didn't believe. So there's a difference between knowing what the truth is and believing that truth. And that's the point that you have to understand It's not because you read this in a catechism. It's not because your mom taught you when you were a kid. It's not because you had the best CCD teacher in in, in town and, and you got the truth and praise God you did. Well, yes, praise God you did if that's the case. But you don't have faith because of that teacher. You have faith because the grace of God has given it to you. To be able to accept the truth that was taught to you and then to believe it. That's where the difference lies. And that is a pure gift from God. So if no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him, then again we have to look at that and say, okay, Jesus said, the Father and I are one. 
said to Thomas, when Thomas said, Lord, show us the Father, he said, do you not know that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? Anyone who sees me sees the Father. So if you know the Son, you know the Father and you know the Holy Spirit because all three are wherever one of them is. That is a gift from the Lord. And that's exactly what he made absolutely clear tonight. No one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You are a member of the Son of God because you're baptized into him, so therefore it's there as a member of the Son that you could know the Father. But why have all these people who are baptized into Jesus walked away? They're members of the Son as well, but they don't know the Father, and they don't know the Son even though they're baptized into him. Because in the mysterious manner of God, he has chosen you and me to be able to believe. It is astounding. And the best thing is don't try and figure out why because you never will, and unless you come back to what St. Paul says and you go, okay, I guess I'm one of the, the ones that are not. I'm one of the, the ones that are nothing. I'm one of the lowborn. I'm one of what, whatever. Fine, you can see that. But even then, that doesn't make sense because there are a whole lot of other people who are in the same boat who don't believe. So there's something different about you than there are about these other people. We don't know what it is. The Lord has chosen you for whatever reason. So again, don't try and figure it out. What I can guarantee you is it's not because you were the best. It's not because you were the smartest. It's not because you were the the, the clear-cut winner in all these different areas that we can lay out and say, oh, here are the ones, uh, this is the, the great one. No, you weren't chosen, I can guarantee you because of that. Now, what the reason was why you were chosen, I have no idea, but it's not any of those. That is for certain. So just accept. Just be grateful. But then to recognize that if God has chosen you and given you this grace, now we have to do something with it. It's not enough just to believe in the Lord Jesus. To believe in the Holy Trinity, we need to act on that. So we need to live it, put it into practice in our day-to-day lives, to strive for that holiness. Again, if God dwells within us, and he does if we're in the state of grace, then that tells us how we need to be living, as temples of the Lord, as tabernacles of the Most High, to be holy, because the Lord God who dwells within us is holy. That's the beauty. Now again, that's not something we can do by ourselves. Remember, we're the lowest, the ones that are not, the ones that are nothing. We can't do any of this by ourselves. It's only by his grace. So if he's going to give us the grace to know him and to believe in him, then trust that he's also going to give you the grace to love him and to serve him. That's why he's chosen you. So open your heart. First recognize this grace that God has given you. Embrace it, rejoice in it. And then ask the Lord for that greater grace to love him with your whole heart and soul and strength so that knowing him and loving him, you will be able to serve him that you will be able to become a saint, that you will know and love and serve him for all eternity. That's your dignity. That is your call. And that's exactly what St. Paul told us to do. Consider your call. That's what it is. That's not something we earned. It's not something we deserved. It is a pure gift from God for which we, for which we must be eternally grateful.